Hi everyone, here's an in-depth look at the IR04 at Donington Park. The setup I'm using is the default iRacing set as per the fixed series. The only thing I'm changing is putting the brake bias back and I've lowered the fuel a little bit. I and made the halo transparent. Weather's on screen. Now you're braking in a straight line here, um, trying to avoid locking up, and I'm, there's no real braking marker, but I'm kind of using that little sort of triangle between the pit exit um, and the start of the corner here as kind of the braking marker, and braking in roughly the middle of it. You're wanting to avoid unsettling the car too much on entry, but you do want to sort of drag the brakes in there on trail braking just to give it a bit of rotation. It's very important that you hit this inside apex, but not, don't go too far over it. This area here will bump the car up and it will sort of make it understeer or bump it across the track. Whereas this area here is the prime spot to open the corner up for a good exit. Now just heading straight through here. Flat out, um, no need to even slightly lift, this car can handle it fine. Now, here, um, the car's primary characteristic with this setup, unfortunately, is a little bit of understeer. So you're really wanting to make sure you get the car rotated into this inside apex here. You're kind of aiming at the dirt a little bit. I am turning it while on the brakes just to get a bit of rotation. Got a little bit of trail braking in. And you're aiming kind of at this area here. And then once you hit the apex, you should be able to pretty much go full throttle and keep the car on track. If you're a little bit wide of this initial apex, I got it nicely there, right on the edge of the curb. If you're a little bit wide, you're really gonna have to wait and slow up um, to get the outside, to get the outside curb. Otherwise, you will get an off track there and your lap will effectively be over. Now the goal ultimately is just to put a couple of wheels out on the grass and you still can get away with it without any off track. Just a little bit, but any more than that and you really, um, then you will get a 1x. Now coming through here, you're wanting to enter from the far left and get the car nicely rotated. This isn't so much of a dangerous corner, but there is a lot of time to pick up here. You want to get the car in and up over this inside curb, kind of about the mid apex point, and then just power out. If you're a little bit hesitant in there, which I, if you're on a good lap, I do tend to find it's tempting just to be a little bit hesitant. You can lose a tenth quite easily on turn in. You've really got to sort of hustle the car on that initial turn in phase and make sure it gets to the apex and um, hard off the corner. Now here's one of the harder corners on the track. You are aiming at an apex um, that is unseen as it's over the crest. So you're kind of turning in and you've just got to work up to it. Have a few goes at trying to work out where the apex is. is it sort of below what the speed you'd normally be running and just slowly start adding apex speed and so you're comfortable to hit it. Once you get the car kind of up on this curb with the front right maybe touching the dirt a tiny bit, you can just full throttle out and the car um, will carry a lot of momentum through there. I find if you're sort of starting to catch it or if you're turning in and getting a little bit of instability because the setup's too far in the nose, you can lose quite a bit of momentum through that corner. Any sort of alternate opposite lock, you're probably not optimal through there. Just want to keep it nice and straight and hit the apex without any problems. Now here's another one of the more difficult corners. Now I'm sort of using this area here as my braking marker, even though you're not braking at it, but I'm using it to judge where I'm braking. And as the edge of it comes up to cut off the right-hand side of the screen, that's where I'm kind of braking. 
and you're wanting to aim the car up on this left hand curb kind of in between the bollards and the curb you will get some understeer on your initial turn in the cars at this point is understeering but if you aim properly at the bollards it'll actually still catch the curb so carrying a lot of apex speed because the second um, apex is a lot wider than you think as long as you can get this curb and the next curb there's a lot of room for the car to push wide once it carries the momentum through those two corners kind of unsettled a little bit but didn't cut didn't um, cost me any momentum we carried a lot of speed through that just a little bit of exit oversteer now here's a um Corner that's very important to get your braking right. Now I'm sort of using this little Marshall's box here as the braking marker. And it's important to get the car slowed and keep it on a tight line to the curb. If you go too far past the curb or you carry too much speed um, and then have to go wide on exit, you do cost yourself a bit of time. So you're just wanting to make you get the car into a nice kind of mid apex line, then hold it tight. Tight through the second bit of the corner while you apply it throttle and that'll drive out without having to use all the track um, if you bomb the car in there under the brakes it's likely to catch a little bit of oversteer at about the um, apex point and you're probably going to have to use more of this track here to settle it up but that actually costs you time as you're adding track distance and just when you've put the whole lap together um, you have this last corner to deal with which isn't quite as straightforward as it seems now you're braking hard towards the end of this curb braking in a straight line i've actually applied full brake lock there which is too much that'll be sort of um, unsettling the car under brakes a little bit and then you kind of want to rotate it around and bring the front left up to about here and at that point you can just full throttle out of the corner but if you unsettle the car, um, then you're going to have to be correcting it here. And it can sometimes make it either understeer or oversteer at this apex, which costs you a lot of time. Alternatively, if you turn in too narrowly or too widely, you're adding track distance and costing yourself time. A narrow line, if you're coming from about here, you're going to have to really rotate the car. So it's important to get the car stopped at just the point you want. And then you turn into this apex. throttle out to 127.3 and I'll rewind the video just to run the full lap okay and here's a lap in full speed um, this is a very enjoyable track in this car I found in these little open wheelers spa sometimes feels like a little bit too much track for the car and the power um, but around here you're constantly driving and it feels constantly in the limit feels yeah it's a nice car to drive around this kind of track and also be good at tracks like barber and um, mid ohio and suzuka and any sort of course that has a lot of corners here's a lap in full speed 